Hello, everybody. Um, I've been praying to the Lord the last few days, you know, like, Lord, is it, what if all this, you know, email or videos I'm being shared, do you want me to share? I mean, I don't, just don't feel like I to share any of it. And I've been praying, Lord, just show me anything you want me to share. Well, I found this scripture in Signal this morning under the Holy Spirit Praise and Worship. And that's where people post scriptures and songs that they get uh, really enjoy. It usually takes you to YouTube and you listen to the song, you know, whatever. Well, this hit, hit home because there's been a lot of people that just do not understand why we cannot pray for people that have uh, made their self less than fully human. I'm going to make this right and put it up on YouTube and but shoot. Uh, they took the snake bite and so they're thinking, well, why can't they, you know, repent? Why can't we pray for them, you know? Some of them are getting sick, they have problems, and they've had strokes, and blah, 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 and whatever. All right, well, this, at least part of this, I'm going to do the whole chapter. Because who doesn't need more of the Word of God every day, you know? All right, so let me try to line this up perfectly. There we go. I'm in Ezekiel chapter 14, and the title starts off, and I'm in the King James Version which I prefer NASB because they capitalized the pronouns for God and Jesus with a capital H. But we'll stick with King James because so many people think it's the least tainted. All right. Ezekiel 14.1 Then came certain of the elders of Israel unto me and sat before me. This is Ezekiel talking. And the word of the Lord came unto me saying, this is God talking to Ezekiel. Son of man, these men have set up their idols in their heart and put the, put the stumbling block of their iniquity before their face. Should I be inquired of at all by them? Now, this was back in the Old Testament. And sins were forgivable. But for the present time, these people had stumbling blocks. They had idols in their life. And folks nowadays have taken the ultimate idol, put their trust in man and medicine and in the beast, the New World Order beast system. That's what they have done. Okay, let's move on to verse 4. Father's talking to Ezekiel. Quotes, Therefore, speak unto them and say unto them thus saith the Lord God every man of the house of Israel that setteth up idols in his heart and put it the stumbling block of his iniquity before his face and cometh to the prophet I the Lord will answer him that cometh according to the multitude of his idols that I may take the house of Israel in their own heart because they are all estranged from me through their idols therefore say unto the house of israel thus saith the lord god repent and turn yourselves from your idols and turn away from your away turn away your faces from all your abominations for every one of the house of Israel or of the stranger that sojourneth or travels through in Israel, which separateth himself from me and setteth up his idols in his heart and putteth the stumbling block of his iniquity before his face and cometh to a prophet to inquire of him concerning me, I, the Lord, will answer him by myself. And I will set my face against that man and will make him a sign and a proverb. In other words, he will make an example out of him. And I will cut him off from the midst of my people. And ye shall know that I am the Lord. And if the prophet be deceived when he hath spoken a thing, I, the Lord, have deceived that prophet and I will stretch out my hand upon him and will destroy him from the midst of my people Israel 
and they shall bear the punishment of their iniquity. The punishment of the prophet shall be even as the punishment of him that seeketh unto him, that the house of Israel may go no more astray from me, neither be polluted any more with all their transgressions, but that they may be my people, and I may be their God, saith the Lord God. The city will not be spared. That's the title of this part. Starts with Ezekiel 14.12 The word of the Lord came again to me, saying, Son of man, when the land sinneth against me by trespassing grievously, then will I stretch out mine hand upon it, and will break the staff of the bread thereof. That means provision. And by the way, city can also mean country. And will send famine upon it, and will cut off man and beast from it. Verse 14. Though these three men, Noah, Daniel, and Job, were in it, they should deliver but their own souls by their righteousness, saith the Lord God. He's telling them they were able to deliver themselves out of trouble, but could not pray for mercy upon the whole entire country of Israel or uh, or Job. Uh, couldn't spare his ten sons. The, the ten children, the original ten children were destroyed. Noah couldn't cry mercy upon all the people. Only he, his wife, his three sons, and their wives were spared the judgment. Noah could not save them. He could only save his family because of his righteousness. Do you see? Praying for America... For mercy, God have mercy on America. You, you've got to spare us, Lord. This is a Christian nation. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, I was going to share a video this morning that talked about that very thing and exactly why God will not spare America. We are tolerating that spirit, Jezebel. Jezebel has been in this country since its inception, since the founding fathers came up with the Declaration of Independence and all that. They were Freemasons, high up Freemasons. But God blessed this country because of the people who came over in the ships, risking their lives to make that trip so they could practice freedom of religion according to how they felt it should be practiced according to the Bible. They weren't allowed to do that in the Church of England and other places over in Europe. So they came here being promised freedom of religion. And now look what's happened to it. I'm going to share the link to that video because I I just talked a bit and I shared a little bit. I talked a little bit more and I was just like, I just didn't feel I'd leave, share it. So I just deleted it. So I'll leave the link. It's excellent. It's only 22 minutes maybe. All right. It's all about this country and Trump and how he was reciting that poem about you silly woman. You knew I was a snake when you took me in. A snake. Working for Satan. We voted him in. He brought about Operation Warp Speed. People got bit. Because they believed in Trump and this country. Instead of God. And what he says. In Psalm 91. No plague or pestilence will enter into my dwelling. Which means also my tent. My home. We're my temple. Our bodies are the temple of the living God. We house the Holy Spirit. And we should by no means put in any poison. Moving on. Alright. So these three holy men could only deliver their own souls by their own righteousness, saith the Lord God. If I cause noisome beasts to pass through the land... And they spoil it, so that it be desolate, that no man may pass through because of the beasts. 
though these three men were in it, as I live, saith the Lord God, they shall deliver neither sons nor daughters, but they only shall be delivered, but the land shall be desolate. He's telling us here, if we are righteous, if we qualify to be spared, how is it Luke 21, 36 says, Lord, I pray that I be counted worthy to escape all these things that are to come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. Some of that escaping might happen while we're still down here. We can escape, but we cannot pray our sons and daughters to be kept if they're living in sin or idolatry. Do you understand? Okay, moving on. Or if I bring a sword upon that land and say, Sword, go through the land, so that I cut off man and beast from it. Though these three men were in it, as I live, saith the Lord God, they shall deliver neither sons nor daughters, but they only shall be delivered themselves. He's not talking about children under the age of accountability, people. Sons or daughters, grown up, they can make their own decisions. Or if I send a pestilence into that land and pour out my fury upon it in blood to cut off from it man and beast, though Noah, Daniel, and Job were in it, as I live, saith the Lord God, they shall deliver neither son nor daughter. They shall but deliver their own souls by their righteousness. For thus saith the Lord God, how much more? When I send my four sore judgments upon Jerusalem, the sword and the famine and the noisome beast and the pestilence to cut off from it man and beast. Yet behold, therein shall be left a remnant that shall be brought forth both sons and daughters. Sons and daughters. It's not just male virgins okay were the wise virgins sons and daughters wise virgins filled with the holy spirit that's who the remnant is the first fruits people the 144,000 behold they shall come forth unto you and ye shall see their way and their doings and ye shall be comforted concerning the evil that i have brought upon jerusalem See, he's talking about Jerusalem, but this is a prophecy for now, people. When we come back in our glorified bodies, we will help those who are still fully human get ready for the multitude rapture, the multitude too large to number, as is mentioned in Revelation chapter 7. I think it starts at verse 12, but I could be wrong about that. I can have a hard time remembering that, but it's like the second part of Revelation chapter 7. The first part is where he's sealing off all the tribes of Israel. Which, by the way, I found out I'm from the tribe of Benjamin. How about that? Let's move on. Alright, so it says, uh, backing up, he says, um, uh, and ye shall be comforted concerning the evil that I have brought upon we could put your land, even concerning all that I have brought upon it. You stay fully human, whatever happens, no matter what, you be prepared to have your head cut off. Do you understand me? Eternity is forever. Whether you go to heaven or you go to hell, it lasts a long, 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 long time and never ends. Moving on. And they shall comfort you when ye see their ways and their doings. And ye shall know that I have not done without cause all that I have done in it, saith the Lord God. This is so talking about 144,000 coming back in our glorified bodies. We're stepping back inside of time. I don't know if it'll be this year or if he'll put us back last year or the year before. I don't know. And what then? I know this will comfort you. 
those of you left behind. You will be comforted, fed, brought to Christ if you're not already, if you're fully human. You'll have your physical needs met. You will agree to spiritual heart healing and deliverance. So you'll be fully ready for when that next rapture happens. And you will not be left behind again. If you're obedient. If you say, yes, yeah, sure. Yes, yeah, sure. Kick demons out of me. Fill me with the Holy Spirit. There will be people who will actually say, no, thank you. I'm good. Just like now. Can you imagine? I cannot. But not everybody will turn to Jesus. They'll see the miracles. They'll see that the greater things than these shall you do, as Jesus said, that we'll be doing. And they'll somehow think it's demonic. <laughs> How funny would that be? Or magical. Or we have some kind of a, a super gadget that we're not showing people. It's some kind of trick. How sad. And I pray that's not true with very many. Okay, that's the end of Ezekiel 14. So, I'm going to plead the blood of Jesus over this video. I pray that people share it. I pray that it blesses you. I pray that it comforts you. I pray that it gives you hope. But God's word is true. There are parts we may not fully understand. There are parts we may uh, not agree fully on. Uh, but I'm telling you, the word of God is true and we can trust in it. Put your trust in God above, God alone, and his son Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit, the Ruach HaKodesh who is our source of wisdom, discernment, strength, knowledge, understanding the word. He's our best friend. He dwells within us. Helps us to speak boldly when maybe we would otherwise be timid. Things like that. Holy Spirit is, brings all those gifts that God has for us. He's the one that causes us to have the mind of Christ. The New Testament says, for now you have the mind of Christ. So how come sometimes we still have stinking thinking? Because we still have our fleshly body. We have to keep putting to death the flesh, as Paul says. The word of God through Paul. Holy Spirit inspired words from God. With that, I'll say bye for now. I'll talk to you later.